This is the seminar on the Mandibular Kennedy Class 3, and it is cast 2 slash 3 slash 3, if you need to get the cast. It is a Kennedy Class 3 because, by definition, it has a unilateral edentulous area with teeth remaining anterior and posterior to it. Now, you say, wait a minute, it's got two of them. The most posterior determines our classification, and it's hard to say which one is most posterior, so we're selecting this one. There is no definition for a bilateral edentulous area with teeth remaining anterior and posterior to it in the Kennedy classification system. So we have to go with Kennedy class 3 that says unilateral edentulous area, and the other edentulous area would be considered a modification space. So this is a Kennedy Class 3 Modification 1. The fulcrums on a Kennedy Class 3 exist across the two teeth that are anterior to the edentulous area and posterior to the edentulous area. So if this were a long edentulous space, this partial denture might want to lift up in this direction by eating something sticky toward the front or lift up in this direction if they ate something sticky toward the back. Either way, with these, we're going to counteract any type of rotational movement on this partial by placing a direct retainer on each tooth anterior to the edentulous area and posterior to the edentulous area. Now let's say that this had four incisors missing also. We would still be placing clasp assemblies next to these posterior edentulous areas more likely than coming up here to the canines and placing one on our canines and then one on our molars. We're going to place them next to this posterior edentulous area. The clasp of choice on our class 3 is the cast circumferential clasp. We can have rigid clasping on a tooth supported removable partial denture. Uh, on a, an extension base, let's say we didn't have a tooth back here, then we would follow some different rules as far as retention and we'll get into those and we would find a mechanism that would be kind on this tooth and not put much torquing force on it. But for the class 3 we can have direct retainers that are rigid and they can be cast circumferentials. That doesn't mean that we can't have other, let's say, eye bars on these teeth if we had a maxillary arch and we were real concerned about aesthetics, then we might put something else there, but we're going to go along with the, the selected choice and that be the cast circumferential. So what we'll be looking for is cast circumferential clasp with a distal rest. We'll look to see whether we have a 0.01 mesiofacial undercut on this side and a 0.01 mesiofacial undercut on that side. On these posterior teeth, if we look at them, they have some tilting to the lingual. So what we will probably look at here is lingual retention, but we would like to have, if we're going to have it on one side, we'd like lingual retention on both sides, and that would satisfy balanced retention for us. So uh, we'll see how the survey turns out, but just glancing at it and eyeballing it, we would think in terms of ring clasp on these particular abutments. And the reason being, if you look at these two teeth, it looks like the, the survey line is going to be way down here and way down here on the buccal aspect of those two teeth. And if you think about the ring clasp or any clasp assembly, you have a reciprocal component, and the reciprocal component must be all above the survey line. So if we use this surface on the buckle of those two teeth, we can ideally place a reciprocal component. By rules, it is supposed to be in the middle third of the tooth, 
but of utmost importance, we have to consider occlusion because these mandibular molars are usually into the central fossas of the maxillary teeth. So we don't want a clasp arm to get in the way of occlusion on this buccal side of the uh, mandibular teeth. So ideally, we could put a reciprocal component, very ideally, on these particular teeth. The direct retainer then, the first half of it has to be above the survey line and the terminal third below the survey line. So the survey line on the lingual is going to be the least ideal. It's going to be higher up and for us, if it's, it's a high survey line, for us to put all of the reciprocal component above the survey line, we're going to have to do some major adjustment of those teeth. But if we use that as our direct retainer side, then we would have less adjustment to do on the lingual surfaces of these teeth. So that's why we're going to consider the, the um, lingual being our direct retainer side. The reason we're going to consider the ring clasp is that our major undercuts are going to be on the mesial lingual aspect of these two teeth, I think. We'll see. And um, so we're going to have to have a mesial rest, a reciprocal component. We'll place another distal rest on that tooth, and then we'll come forward and grab the most severe undercut on those two teeth. The most severe undercut may be on the distal facial, uh, distal lingual of that one. I'm not positive. So we may be able to do just a conventional clasp where we put a rest and we put our direct retainer going to the distal and not have to encircle that tooth in order to get up here to the um, mesial lingual. We'll just have to see after we survey these teeth. So either way, we're going to have four direct retainers on our Kennedy Class 3. The other thing that we have to think about is balanced retention. So if we have balanced retention, we need to say if we're going to have and find buccal retention on this side of the arch, then we need to balance it off by having buccal retention on this side of the arch. We can have buccal, 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 and lingual if we had to. Ideally, we would like buccal, 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 or it might, would be advantageous to have, say, buccal, buccal, lingual, lingual, but we have to go by our undercuts and see what we have. The only thing we cannot have is buccal, buccal, lingual, lingual, because the partial denture would want to dislodge itself in this direction if, say, you ate some uh, caramels, something very sticky. As far as rest, we would like to have rest next to our edentulous area for support of the prosthetic tooth to keep it from moving in a gingival direction. So ideally, we'd have a, a rest on each of these teeth next to that edentulous area. We might have, if we have teeth, our missing spaces way back here and pretty far back here, but if with our major connector, if we had a rest here and we had, a, say, a, an arm on this side, it's a, quite a distance for our major connector to come all the way around here. So sometimes we will place an additional rest to help support the long major connector. So on this particular case, we'll probably be considering an additional rest on the mesial of our first premolar over here to give some additional support for this long major connector. I don't think we'll put one on the um, canine over here. We do not have to have, this is not an indirect retainer. We are not preventing rotation by using this particular rest. It's just an additional rest to support that long major connector. 
If we had those four incisors missing, as I'd said before, then we would at least want to have some type of a rest next to or near each edentulous area. We don't have to have an additional clasp assembly. We're only going to have four, and those four are going to be next to these posterior edentulous areas. But we would want to have another rest close to that edentulous area to provide positive support for this uh, prosthetic set of denture teeth that we'd be placing in that area. We have to look at what is going to be our major connector. Our major connector ideally is the lingual bar if we have enough room. Now I made a little mark down in here where it shows I see a frenum attachment there. So the floor of the mouth is going to raise up at least to that particular height. And our rule is that if we place a millimeter ruler in that area and from that functional floor of the mouth to the marginal gingiva, we need to have a minimum of eight millimeters in order to use a lingual bar and we don't have it on this particular area. We have mm, six and a half to seven millimeters in that area. So we will be placing a lingual plate in this area because we don't have room for the lingual bar. If we place a lingual plate, I think you can see some areas where we have some diastemas and you can see through that area. We will consider dipping down on our major connector in that area so that from the anterior aspect, you would not see some ugly black metal behind that area when we draw our major connector. So let's go ahead and survey this cast and see what we have and then we'll finalize our design.